So you do enrichment. And you do this so you can get that reactor fuel, or, or maybe so you can get the bomb material. What happens to the rest of it? If I took six units, I don't care what that is, kilograms, pounds, liters, whatever you want, like natural uranium, it has 0.7% uranium-235. Now I take those six units and I do my enrichment. And I will end up with one unit that's at 3.2%. That's your reactor fuel. But I'm also going to end up with five units where the uranium-235 is depleted. This will be at 0.2%. Doesn't go down all the way. And you can tell that this works because 6 times 0.7 4.2. This is 5 times 0.2, which is 1, plus 3.2 is 4.2. For every bit of reactor fuel I make, I have 5 units of depleted uranium sitting around. If I was going all the way to bomb production at 90%, that number goes up dramatically. It might be 50 units of depleted uranium sitting around. So what do you do with all that depleted uranium? It's been stored for many years. And if we ever go to a breeder reactor cycle, when we use U-238 as the fuel, wow, we've got all the fuel already that we need for many years. But there's something else you can do with uranium-238. Ever think about why are bullets made out of what they are? this? Hmm. Well, I know the police can use rubber bullets to break up protests. Not advisable. I'd prefer, you know, water cannons or something, but rubber bullets supposedly won't penetrate through your body, make a bruise, sort of like paintball, maybe. Don't want to be shot by one. But it's made out of rubber, whereas if you made the tip of it out of lead, very dense substance, it'll kill you, go right through your body. If you make it out of uranium, it's even denser, even heavier than lead. And there's a particular other aspect of uranium, is that it has an exothermic chemical reaction when it strikes things like iron. This means armor, like three inches of steel that might be on the front shield of a tank, is easy to penetrate if you have a bullet made out of uranium. Basically, the uranium melts itself right through and you can blow up the tank. So, governments can make munitions out of uranium. Here are these 20 millimeter diameter anti-tank shells. And you can see that these can be loaded into some type of gun. And now you have a wonderful anti-tank weapon because the armor on the tank will be penetrated by these slugs. We've talked about uranium being radioactive. Not highly so, but still. So you may be concerned that after you use these munitions, you have radioactive substances scattered around the battlefield. And I can see that's a legitimate concern. But I'd have a more important concern that if I was fighting in a war and the other side had uranium-tipped bullets and I did not, I wouldn't want to be on that other side. War is messy. You've got two groups of people trying to kill each other. And if your country wants to win that war and not have your soldiers die, you give them the best tool you can. If that means you can destroy their tank, and maybe there's going to be some pollution left in the ground, well, I'd rather destroy their tank than them having destroyed my tank with my people in it. War's always been messy. Heavy metal pollution from lead bullets occurs certainly as well. And in most cases, just a slug of uranium sticking in the ground is no worse than the fact that uranium was under the ground. It's when that bullet gets vaporized, when it hits something like the metal in the tank, and then it goes into the vapor which could be breathed. And indeed, there are some health effects, and our soldiers, and I'm sure the other side's soldiers as well, had from ill effects of this uranium. 
Still, if I were the soldier, I'd rather have that than have had the other person's tank shoot and kill us. What about the exploded, depleted uranium that's left on the battlefield that years later someone has to live in? Well, uranium is toxic the same level that lead is toxic. People don't use lead pipes anymore because the water goes through them, they pick up a little bit of lead. They also generally don't use lead paint because again, the paint chips, you know, you, you're in constant contact with them, maybe kids eat them and so forth. So, you know, eating lead is not a good idea. Keep in mind, that's what all the other bullets that have always been used in every war are made of, is lead. Uranium chemically has about the same toxicology of that. There is also the thing that uranium is radioactive. But the half-life is four and a half billion years, which is really, really long. So the radiological toxicity of it is actually fairly low. So I have here uh, some depleted uranium. It's about as radioactive as the fossil, actually a little less. Because remember, the real short half-life stuff, the uranium-235, is almost all gone. It's only 0.2%. And do not open this, okay? But if you actually want to see uranium, right, and this is the form of uranium oxide, you clearly don't want to go scoop up fragments of uranium bullets and eat them, all right? Just like you wouldn't want to do that with lead bullets or with a ton of other stuff that's in the ground that you shouldn't eat. Studies have been done to see if the soldiers that have been exposed to this because explosions happen, things get vaporized, you end up breathing in probably some small amounts of uranium. Clearly some soldiers had fragments of bullets in their body. It's always a good idea to get out bullet fragments no matter what they're made of. And the Veterans Affairs Office in the United States government has studied this effect over time. Gulf War syndrome, could that be due to depleted uranium? And the answer is no. Gulf War syndrome is very real. It's a post-traumatic stress disorder. Being in a war, having people shoot at you, having to kill other people, that's extremely stressful. I don't take anything away from those veterans. They did what their country asked them to do and they should be well taken care of. And uranium should certainly be studied, but all the studies that have looked at it, is this a result of the depleted uranium, have shown that it's not. Even the World Health Organization, not something connected to the United States, did a detailed study on the effects of depleted uranium and found that it's really no worse than all the other stuff you have on a battlefield. So you will see places saying, oh, they're using this radiological, horrible, dirty bomb. Well, I'll take a dirty bomb made out of depleted uranium any day compared to a dirty bomb made out of extremely highly radioactive substances. War is not pretty. Our soldiers need to be well taken care of after such a traumatic type event. Blaming it all on depleted uranium is very short-sighted. Science tells us that that's not 